我哋而家够钟亦都。Members, we have a quorum and we've reached the appointed hour. We need a small. We need six members only to make a quorum.、Uh, shall we invite the government officials in? Now, please、uh, call the policy secretary. We don't have a long agenda today.、Um, the the secretary for the environment is here to speak to us on、uh, key environmental. Initiatives, and then、uh, the next item is an update on the incentive scheme on the use of cleaner fuel by ocean-going vessels at Perth. After the last meeting, we received two letters: one from Greenpeace, the other from the Friends of the Earth, and they are all related to regulating the power market or the electricity market. Um, one of them suggests that we set up a, a an ad hoc committee to follow the matter up with regard to the regulation of electricity tariffs. It is a matter、uh, which belongs to the economic affairs panel.、Uh, the cut in、um, emission, of course, will have a Cost implication, and that of course、um, will、uh, falls under our、uh, purview.、Um, I will、uh, pass、uh, pass the letter on to the chairman of the economic affairs panel and see if、uh, he finds it appropriate to have a joint meeting with us on this issue. As for whether we are going to set up an ad hoc committee or a subcommittee、uh, to deal with the issue, maybe after the first meeting we can decide whether we will form such a. Committee,、um, if we think that it is appropriate, and there are many loose ends, right?、Um, I will. If we do have no objection, objection, I uh, do um, as suggested. As for items for discussion at ne next meeting, last week we met the secretary and the, the under secretary on the、uh, coming. Uh, on the issues in、uh, the coming year, it doesn't mean that the issues will be、uh, the list of issues will be cast in iron.、Uh, we will also、uh, call special meetings if there is a need. And if you want to raise any other issues, please feel free to raise them at any time. On the 26th of November, we'll have a meeting, and we are going to discuss uh, uh, several. Uh, public works,、um, the、uh, storage at Clearwater Bay Road, Pixley Sun Chun, and west of Sai Kung Town, extension of cleaner production partnership program, and ecological impact arising from the construction works, as in the case of Tai Long Tai Po Long May Beach project. Do members want to、uh, put anything on the、um, list of outstanding items for discussion? If not, then. I will discuss these three items. Right,、um, agenda item number two: briefing by the secretary for the environment on the key environmental initiatives.、Uh, the secretary, please.、Um, good afternoon, Madam Chairman and members. In、uh, preparation for the environmental measures of this term of the government, Mr. Chen Hakan, I just want to ask questions. Uh, I want to wait in the line. A paper has been given to members, and that is CB 158 stroke 1213, bracket 02. We are told by the、uh, bureau that、um, that、uh, was the speaking note of the secretary. We don't want to waste、uh, your time.、Um, it is rather long. Even if we start reading now, it will be faster than the、um, secretary. Uh, reading it out, and we have read.、Uh, I believe many members have read the paper. So,、um, Mr. Secretary, you don't need to read out the paper in full. You can highlight、um, the major points.、Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Now you have received my speaking note. I believe you've read it. Um, 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 in response to the、uh, speech of the CE、uh, last Wednesday, we emphasize the、uh, balanced development. 
emphasize balanced development. We are moving. We want to move towards low carbon and green economy. Um, we need to um, keep our air clean, conserve our nature. We need to discuss. We need to make commitment. We need to pay for that. And we hope that the policy can balance development and conservation. Um, we need the commitment of the community, and we will work together with the community. We put emphasis on coordination so that the policies can be comprehensive and they can be improved smooth. They can be implemented smoothly. We have set up four policy groups. One, um, one is um, sustainable development, energy, environment. Under the leadership of uh, the CSYA, there will be cro um, cross departmental cooperation, better cross um, departmental cooperation. That is a 3S meeting. The, it is a regular communication mechanism between the Environment Bureau and other related bureaus. Last week, I had a chance to talk to the chairman and vice chairman on our year and uh, on our work plan in the coming year, and I highlight them. And they are air quality. Uh, we have a new approach. We tr uh, want to maintain a close liaison with stakeholders. On the 19th, on the 17th and 20th last month, we met with academics, experts, and environmental groups. Um, to uh, exchange views, um, we come to a consensus, and that is, roadside air quality is a major concern for health. And basing on that, we want to deal with the problem at source. And there are two sources, and they are related to vehicles: the old diesel um, goods vehicles and buses. The CE also made um, a comment in his, uh, in his address and said that he would deal with the problem. Now there were reports uh, on different views. Now we adopt a two-pronged approach: encouragement and regulation. Um, we will phase out old diesel goods vehicles. Now the details have to be worked out with the trade. Next year, we will adopt. Rosai remote control operators to test um, vehicle emission. This will enhance the regulation of diesel goods vehicles. Buses are also our targets. Um, January next month, we will report to the panel on the um, fitting uh, on the testing result of SCR. And I visited the bus depots. Um, to look at uh, the progress, and we also give funding for them to buy um, hybrid um, buses and electric buses. We are going to reorganize public transport routes, and I hope we get your support as vessels. Uh, we will speak on the details in the next uh, under the next item, and we encourage ocean-going liners to use low sulfur diesel, and we'll also encourage uh, local vessels. To um, operate um, in an environmentally friendly manner. As for the AQO or AQOs, early next year we will um, introduce a bill to amend the law. Um, there will be a package of measures to improve air quality with a view to achieving the AQG uh, stipulated by the WHO. We will formulate um, the establishment of medium to long term targets and related uh, plans. We will improve our air quality index system, improve its review system to make sure that the reporting is appropriate and timely with regard to upholding people's health. As for emission by power generators, um, the Council discussed the tightening of emission in the year 2017. We are working on the technical memorandum and will soon be submitted into this, uh, to this Council. Waste management is also a common concern. The CE in his 
political platform stated very clearly that we would adopt a policy to reduce waste as source. I looked at uh, the management of housing uh, estates, uh, um, the, the management of foodways in housing estates and schools. I also looked at um, recycling industries. I talked to the trade to understand their situation. Um, as for uh, there is much room for the development of waste reduction and waste recycling, but we need the cooperation of the citizens and the support of trade. We want to establish an overall recycling network in order to turn Hong Kong into a low waste green city. Together with NISA, uh, we visited uh, Taiwan to learn the experience of reducing waste. Uh, Taiwan introduced waste charging, but it took a lot of time in order to achieve the present effect. Uh, they also introduced a number of related measures. We know the complexity, and we know that there should be a transition period. In December, we will report to the panel the consultation of waste charging. We send a lot of uh, waste to the landfills, and one third belong to um, cooked food, wa um, food waste. We need to reduce food waste, and we need to manage food waste. Now we are organizing or preparing for the uh, food waste campaign. We work with trade, and we work with those living in housing estates. Um, we want to change people's habits in order to reduce food waste. We will continue to implement the producer pay uh, producer responsibility scheme, and we will extend our plastic bag charging scheme, and also the um, PRS for electronic and electrical waste. We need to cut waste as source, but we need to deal with solid waste as well. And in November, we will um, c conduct another engagement exercise with stakeholders on solid waste disposal in order to draft our uh, blueprint. As for climatic change and reduction of energy, this is also the administration's uh, priority. And in June, together with SUSTEF, uh, we um, introduced the uh, energy campaign. The Building Energy Efficiency uh, Ordinance in, um, came into effect in September. All new buildings and large-scale buildings will have to comply with the law, and we will implement the recommendations made by the Sustainable Development Council on deepening the implementation of energy saving, uh, thereby achieving a green building uh, environment. As for saving energy, we want to get your support in two areas. Number one, the district cooling system of TITAC Phase 1 and Phase 2 are now under construction. In this legislative session, we want to seek your funding approval for the third session, for the third phase, and we need to deal with light pollution. We will set up a task force to deal with outdoor lighting, and we will update you on the progress of work. As for climate change, we put emphasis on demand side management. We try to save energy. And at the same time, we also review the fuel mix of the power plants after the Fukushima incident. is about um, um, is about one and a half years after the Fukushima, Fukushima incident, and it's time for us to uh, review um, the use of um, uh, fuel mix and energy. And we will engage um, experts and academics and members of public and other stakeholders. We'll see. The fourth aspect, natural conservation. We place emphasis on conserving the natural environment. We like to conserve and manage 
country parks, and we'd like to also expand Hong Kong's ecological capacity. We are very concerned about Tai Long Sai Wan and also the two pieces of excluded land at Yun Dan Chin Wan and also Kam Shan in Sha Tin would be included in the boundary of the country park. We will gazette the relevant plan at the end of October in order to start the relevant statutory procedures. We will continue to ban commercial fishing in marine parks and we will also implement our work under the Biodiversity Convention so as to preserve biodiversity in Hong Kong. We are going to set up a database so that we can formulate different strategies and action plans on biodiversity and the same will be the subject of conservation with relevant stakeholders. Last but not least, cooperation with Guangdong. In order to effectively manage environment pollution, we must work together with the region. In order to do this, we have to work hand in hand with Guangdong province. In 2002, the two places have agreed upon a plan to improve air quality. And uh, in 2010, as we have um, already announced in October this year, we have already achieved the targets set down for lowering the pollutants in our air quality. And on this basis, we will talk to the Pearl River Delta in order to set down the targets for the next stage to reduce emissions in the air. Uh, we have entered into the final stage of our negotiation and we hope to be able to announce the results within the year. At the same time, the container throughput a volume of PLD ranks first in the world and vessel pollution has become one of the main sources of pollution. In the international community, vessel pollution control is an important environmental issue. In order to have sustainable development in the Pearl River Delta, we have to reduce ocean-going ve ocean vessels' pollution. And we have started our discussion with the Guangdong province so that vessels can make use of low sulfur dew when, uh, fuel when they berth at our ports and so that um, the Pearl River Delta would be turned into a green port. We have to help Hong Kong businessmen working in the P Pearl River Delta to turn to clean production. The two governments have launched the Clean Production Partnership Scheme, which will run for five years. Uh, this will help us improve air quality in the region. And uh, after studying the issue, we are going to lengthen or prolong the plan. And uh, this will be the subject of discussion with members next week, uh, next month, actually. So I have talked about five issues, air quality, uh, waste management, climate change and energy efficiency, nature conservation and cooperation with Guangdong province. Um, I have not included every piece of information for the sake of time saving, but I look forward to working closely with members and I welcome members' views. Thank you. Sorry, Chairman, I, uh, sorry, I have left out one procedure. I should have introduced the um, official team. I thought that we knew each other so well, but of course there are newcomers to the Legislative Council. On the first row, we have Mr. Wang Kian Singh, Secretary for the Environment, and then Ms. Christine Lo, Under Secretary for the Environment, and then Ms. Anisa Wong, PS, for the Bureau, and then uh, on the second row, we have Ms. Vivian Lau, Deputy Secretary for the Environment, Mr. Jie Chin Wen, Deputy Director of uh, uh, EP, Mr. Albert Lam, Deputy Director of EP, and also Mr. Andrew Lai, Deputy Director of EP. Before I welcome questions, I'd like to give you some information Last week, we got uh, the legislative timetable for 2012-13 uh, from the administration. There are three pieces of such legislation which relate to this panel. First of all, the AQO uh, Improvement um, Ordinance, and this is about the AQ standards for use in uh, EIA. And secondly, the um, shoppers' responsibility, uh, second stage shopping back um, levy scheme. Number three, the placing of uh, C and D waste, construction and demolition waste on private land and the uh, charging scheme. So these are the three pieces of legislation that might appear before our eyes in 2012-13. Now there 
This is now the time for members to ask questions. Chen Hak Ken, Dennis Kwok, Chen Kin Po, and Wu Chi Wai, and then some more. Please keep your hands there. Let me look at you, and then uh, I'll count the numbers and propose the time slot for each member. Altogether, there are 11 members indicating their intention to speak. I have to draw a line there. I'm sorry, I have to draw a line for the first item of our panel. Uh, Deputy Chairman, uh, anything from you? If not, then including myself, there are 12 members. So you know the order. Gary Chan, Dennis Kwok, Wu Chi Wai, Sin Chung Kai, Lo Wai Kwok, Yi Chi Ming, uh, Chen Ka Lok, and then uh, all together 11 members and then uh, myself the 12th and also Elizabeth Quart. Okay, you're joining. I will place you after Kwok Wai Kang. So all together 13 members. I think members would agree that we will only have four minutes each including a question and reply. If you exhaust your four minutes, there will not be any reply from officials. We must um, implement this strictly. Nobody can exceed the time even by 30 seconds. Gary Chen, I'd like to ask the Secretary about waste management. If we look at the last term, let's go. The administration's work in this regard has not been very successful. I think the most ideal um, piece of legislation that was passed was about the use of plastic shopping bags and the charge. But then with regard to waste management, the community and many green groups are saying that you have not done enough to reduce waste as source. Waste management facilities including landfills and incinerators, when they came to LegCo, they were invariably vetoed and they did not get the support. I remember when you assumed office, I heard you say a lot about um, domestic waste charging. However, I have not heard too much from you about reduction so uh, waste at source. But of course, you have spent some uh, coverage in your paper on this. Secretary, in fact, people are not leading an easy life. But uh, at the beginning, you're already telling us that you intend to charge for the management of domestic waste. I think that is not proper because data tell us that commercial activities are generating more and more solid waste every year. On the contrary, the solid waste from uh, domestic sources is on the decline. So if you're only proposing to charge for the management of domestic waste, are you actually tackling the wrong side of the problem. Secretary, you say you will be furnishing a paper to LegCo. Are you going to target domestic waste only or also waste arising from commercial activities? Number two, Chairman, you remember at our last meeting, actually in the last term, the administration said that the landfills are near saturation. And now, Do you intend to put expansion of landfills at the top of your agenda? If yes, will you act like the last term of government and bundle up incinerator and landfills, or will you go for the easy part first, the less controversial topics and these polluting facilities, which may not have such a big impact on people's lives, will you present them to LegCo first so that we can discuss them and so that uh, the public can discuss them? Secretary, please get on with the reply, but I will stop you when the four minutes are over. Thank you. As a citizen, as the Secretary for the Environment, I, of course, understand waste management uh, very well. The reduction of waste at source is also a principle. Um, topic for the new administration. But we have to understand what ways we are talking about. 30 to 40 percent of waste dumped at landfills is food waste. So we will target and tackle this head on. As I said in my speech, we are not going to charge for food waste but to reduce food waste at source. We are going to launch a campaign to reduce food waste. We'll be targeting different trades and sectors, especially the commercial sector. Recent data show 
that there is a sharp rise in food waste、uh, resulting from commercial activities. So we are going to、um, emphasize this part of our work. And secondly, we'd like to have a blueprint for managing municipal solid waste. We are not only talking about landfills and other facilities per se. What about the charging scheme? Will you be targeting domestic waste or commercial waste? Sarah, you have to allow、uh, allow your party members to help you follow up. Secondly, Dennis Kwok, thank you. I'd like to ask about air quality. In para thirteen, you talk about the、um, air pollution indies index. You said that you'll be proposing a bill to amend the legislation. I'd like to ask why. We don't make use of Section Seven Bracket One of Cap Three One One, the APIO, in order to、um, change the AQOs. And at the same time, would you also amend Para One of Schedule Four of the EIAO so as to assess the air quality? As impacted by each project, why don't you heighten and tighten the relevant standards there? Number three. Also in、uh, para twenty-five, you talk about the twenty o two regional air quality. I think in Hong Kong you told us that we have achieved the target, but what about the mainland? What is the official、um, assessment? And also, when can we know? The situation for the next stage, Secretary, Chairman, and、uh, Mr. Kwok. The third question first. Within the year, we would like to answer the two questions you asked, and that is the achieving of target or otherwise by Guangdong in the last ten years, and also within the year we would like to be able to draw up the target for the next ten years for both parties. As for the Guangdong situation, we will have to wait for announcement from the Guangdong side、uh, because we have mutual respect for each other. As for the first and second questions, I can answer them together. We have considered the different options, and we have chosen the. Amendment of legislation, thinking that it is a more appropriate way to do it because we have to tackle several aspects. Number one, if we go for legislation, we'll be able to have a mechanism for regularly reviewing the AQOs, and that is every five years. We think that that is a better way to do it. Number two, we do need a transitional arrangement. EIAs are closely related to AQOs. Many projects are underway, but there is no mechanism to provide for a transitional、uh, measure. So we need to have a reasonable and、uh, fair mechanism to tackle this transition. And the sector should know clearly what the effective Date is, and we should provide for that in legislation. Therefore, after looking at different aspects, we would like to provide the assessment by legislation. I don't know whether Miss Low would、um, supplement, Deputy Secretary or Under Secretary, as to why we cannot amend the TM to do it. Well, actually, yes, we can do it that way. But after looking at the issue, we think that might not be the way, best way to do it. You can imagine. We are going to have this amendment, and that is every five years the AQOs will be reviewed. This is what experts and legislative members would like to see, and you can imagine next time when we want to amend it, there should be some wide discussion. If we continue to amend the TM, we may not be acting in the most prudent manner because we want to discuss it with legislative. And secondly, as the secretary said, there are other issues. Sorry, Under Secretary, we have to、uh, implement the time limit strictly. I like to remind members and、uh, councillors. You know the、um, issues very well, but、uh, so you are using English acronyms. However, this is broadcast to the public by the media, so please do not use English acronyms, but terms that are well known to the public.
Uh, Mr. Chen Jinpo, the Secretary has um, given a detailed reply to the issues which we are very concerned about, and there was also a consensus on uh, blue, there, there are there are issues on pollution caused by cross boundary diesel vehicles and reducing waste sources are also our concerns. Concerning safe energy, in February I proposed in this council um, a motion urging the government to take the lead in in, in uh, carrying out an energy saving campaign, and that was endorsed by this council. But the government has not done anything so far in Taiwan. Um, they have the uh, depreciation uh, allowance, um, or rather, reduction uh, tariff reduction allowance. If um, they are able to cut the energy say, um, consumption by five percent, they are given a certain discount. Um, they are able, therefore, uh, cut energy by sixty energy consumption by sixty percent. Well, I just want to know whether. Uh, you uh, have any more aggressive measures to encourage people to participate in energy saving? Energy saving is most effective and most uh, cost effective. It helps to uh, reduce climate um, the adverse impact on climate change. is a win-win situation. Uh, Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Chen. I agree with you. Whether it is uh, for the business or for the families, saving energy um, saves money and is a win-win situation. We've learned our lessons from uh, learned lessons from Singapore and Taiwan. At the weekend, uh, at the end of this month, we'll have a workshop with academics and stakeholders on how to strengthen our energy-saving measures. As for reviewing the uh, tariff of the power companies, we are talking to the power companies to see if a mechanism can be introduced to give incentive to energy saving. In Hong Kong, buildings consume 90% of the uh, power generated, and domestic buildings only consumes about 20 to 30 percent of the power. And if we can encourage businesses to save energy, that will go a long way to combating climate change. Apart from having a campaign on saving energy by families, we should also encourage the businesses to save energy. We encourage uh, the business sector to conduct energy audit so that the business sector knows uh, the um, level of energy consumption and they can therefore um, take suitable measures to reduce energy consumption. So through um, audit there can be various uh, means to um, reduce energy consumption. And we have the building energy ordinance and we can uh, through the law um, obtain, obtain data and then uh, help us to do analysis. I have some time, just five seconds. Will you set targets for the whole territory? Mr. Wu Chi Thank you Madam Chairman. I want to ask the Secretary. You propose low carbon living and one uh, um, important measure is the um, bicycle, the use of bicycles. But the Transport Bureau doesn't support using bicycles as a means of transport. How, what do you think? Now, under your leadership, do you to be able to coordinate with other bureaus and use bicycles as a means to achieving low carbon living? Yes, for energy saving, Mr. Chen Kin Paul um, mentioned that. But saving water is also crucial. Will the secretary tell us more on 
saving energy and saving water, what measures uh, will be introduced to deal with large uh, consumers? Now, in and in terms of energy, that is bigger discounts for volume consumption, but um, that encourages the uh, waste of energy. Para eleven mentions the uh, consolidation of public transport routes. It seems that you want members to support you at the district council level, but the does the Environment Bureau has any uh, positive measures? Will it be able to coordinate with other departments instead of just relying on the um, district councils? Well, uh, Mr. Secretary, when will you ask Mr. Wu out uh, to have, say, cycling, uh, to have some cycling exercise? Well, I, I grew up in uh, Chiang San and I also uh, cycled. On the question of planning our public transport facilities, such as uh, buses and railways, and also other means of transport, um, we will work with other bureaus. We have the three S committee: the uh, Transport and Housing Bureau, the Environment Bureau, and the Development Bureau. The three uh, policy secretaries met, uh, meet together from time to time, and then we will discuss um, issues, uh, common issues. We've strengthened interdepartmental cooperation. We want to achieve a um, reasonable uh, level of uh, public transport tariffs uh, and also achieve low and low uh, green, low carbon living. As for bicycles, I think we should look at it comprehensively. Uh, from the perspective of low carbon living, now we are going to provide more railways, and, and now with more railways, and in Hong Kong Island, we need to reorganize the bus routes in order to fit in with the new railway network, and we. We'll have more. We will thereby able to provide more road space, um, maybe even more space for bicycles. But uh, these measures cannot be achieved overnight. Now the uh, yes, your time is up, Mr. Wong, Mr. Sin Chong Kai. I want to speak on air quality. Uh, para eleven. The um, buses and para ten the diesel um, vehicles. Now buses have a lifespan of uh, seventeen or eighteen years. If you are in Causeway Bay and Wen Chai, you notice that um, air pollution caused by buses is very serious. Is there any way to um, require the buses? Uh, to be the old buses to be scrapped, will the administration buy back the old buses? I want to ask this question. Do you have a timetable with regard to um, places where there are many pedestrians? Uh, you will uh, song them as low emission areas. High emission vehicles will be barred from entering these places. Not only the residents living there will be benefited, but during holidays, Hong Kong people do go to these places. And if roadside pollution is reduced, people will get uh, the benefit. Now, I support, of course, cutting emission by par. Um, Generators or power plants. Um, you need a carrot as well as stick. Say, for example, the, uh, one stick is you have low emission zone. 
of the policy secretary. Uh, Mr. Sin, I agree with you. Roadside quality uh, has a direct impact on our health. It is most important. Uh, the colleague responsible for air uh, quality will speak on this in greater detail. Now, Mong Kok Central and Causeway Bay have the poorest air quality in roadside air quality. Now we have planned to work with the bus companies on improving the buses uh, so that they can reach um, lower emission targets. We are working on that step by step. My colleague will supplement. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sin, you want to follow up? Well, I'm fair. I, I let him answer the question. Um, thank you, Chairman. Concerning uh, bus emission, we have three measures. As said by the Secretary, um, we hope to uh, introduce SCR for Euro 3000, Euro 2 to Euro 3 vehicles. And the emission can be upgraded to the equivalent of Euro 4 and Euro 5. And with the uh, funding approval of this council, we've already asked the bus companies to buy 36 electric buses. Um, this will help them move towards a low emission fleet. As for low emission zones, we work through the transport department um, to talk to the three companies and ask them to redeploy low emission uh, low emission buses to the three most polluted zones. We are watching very closely the replacement bus replacement program of the bus companies. As said by Mr. Sin, the oldest bus is 18 years old. In the coming few years, the buses will have the bus companies will have to replace 3,000 buses. Mr. Lowe Kwok. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I have two questions. First, about uh, electric and ele electrical and electronic waste responsibility program. After much consultation, the administration is going to give $400 million for the dismantling of uh, electrical and electronic waste. Um, it's possible to achieve a consensus among stakeholders. When will we be able to see the setting up of the dismantling facilities? Another point which is not spoken in um, by the Secretary and that is the structure between the Bureau and the Department. Now, the um, Department has merged with the Bureau, and we are concerned about the conflicting roles. The Permanent Secretary and the Director are wearing two hats. I'm not saying that uh, they are not capable, but in terms of policy and in terms of implementation, shouldn't there be a separation of roles? I hope you can answer me. The second question is very meaningful. The secretary. Two questions. The first one, I asked my colleague to answer the question. Yes, the uh, deputy director. Concerning the um, PRS for electrical and electronic waste in the past one or two years, we had public consultation. As said by Mr. Lowe, we've um, been talking to the trade on the operation of the PRS. Um, we are discussing the charging mode, when should charge be imposed, and how should responsibilities be shared. Uh, how can the retail sector participate, and the um, extent of responsibility of the producer. The government has a commitment. For the implementation of the scheme, the administration will provide some facilities, and we will go to the FC to apply for funding to set up a public works program for the 
uh, establishment of a uh, electronic electrical waste treatment facility to deal with um, the collected items. We'll further the discussion with the sector, and after tackling a few minor points, we can start to draft the legislation. So we are doing a few things at the same time. As for the second question, and that is the director of EPD. who is the person to formulate the policy and also the gatekeeper gatekeeper for environment impact assessments, um, whether there will be a conflict of interest because he wears these two hats. Well, I have received diverse views on this one, and I myself have a different view. I believe the present mode is the subject of a check and balance system within the administration. So that the uh, conflict of interest will be reduced to a minimum. I believe the present system is an effective system, but of course there is room for improvement and we can do a review in due course. I think I'll answer you like that for the moment. Actually, I'm not talking about one post, but whether the Bureau and the Department should be separated. Uh, we can look into that later. I can give you some information. The DEP P seemed to be um, a professional, but then the undersecretary can remember as well as I do, and then uh, there might have been some conflict of interest, and then it was now taken up by AOs. But I believe uh, green groups would like the two to be separated and for the DEP to continue to be a professional. Mr. Yip Chiming, thank you. I have to declare interest. I am responsible for certain work under Hactol, and also I'm a director of Star Ferry. So that's my declaration of interest. Last week, the secretary has already mapped out certain directions for taking forward environment protection, and I would like to reflect the views of my sector today. The community and the sector, of course, do support an improvement to air quality. But then the sector thinks that we should still thresh out the details more carefully. The ship companies already signed a charter two years ago to engage in volunteer waste or emission reduction. In para 26, you only call them a polluter, but you make no mention of what they have done, so they are raising their voices against this, and they would like the administration to communicate with them better when whether there can be more incentives so that the sector uh, will be more happy to take part and whether you can do more publicity so that large companies will also be attracted. In overseas countries, they provide better incentives than Hong Kong. Later on, if you intend to legislate to control vessel emission, you must implement your measures at the same time as other ports in PLD, or else the liners will all be chased uh, away from Hong Kong, and that can deal a blow to our logistics industry. As for land transportation, as I said in an article last week in the papers, we believe everyone in Hong Kong should be responsible for air quality. Why do you only target the transportation industry, uh, the power companies, bus companies, if they go for power reduction or emission reduction, they will be able to have uh, subsidies for their fares. But then the land transport industry cannot do it. Their operating costs are very high. They cannot hire people uh, even with a good pay, and they have to take out a very expensive insurance cover. And if you do not provide the incentives to them, they may not be able to continue to um, operate. And as you know, they cannot increase the charges for their customers as the U.S. is not doing well either. And also, you say all diesel trucks of 15 years old should be removed from the road. They will not agree if a 
their vehicles are maintained well, if they can comply with your emission standards, why can't you tolerate their existence? In the past, you had two car replacement programs, but they were not effective because of poor incentives. I will be talking to the sector in the coming two days, and I will reflect the information collected to the Secretary. In fact, today I'd just like to let the Secretary know the difficulties experienced by the sector. Secretary, 38 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Yik. I understand you support the major directions. It's just that uh, you'd like to discuss the details. And under that major premise, I think we are going in the right direction. I understand that on Wednesday, the industry and Mr. Yik would have an in-depth discussion, and we would welcome um, any details that you can furnish us so that we can balance incentives and control. As for vessels, um, that will be taken up uh, when we come to the next agenda item. So the administration, the sector, must work towards the same target. Mr. Kenneth Chan. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to ask two questions. One. Para 22, power generation fuel mix, reducing carbon emission for the sake of our environment and for the sake of the climate, uh, that is something you should do. You say the Fukushima incident has taken place one and a half years ago, and this is time for us to review our future direction for tackling climate change. I'd like to ask you for your position with regard to nuclear energy for power generation. Have you changed your stance in any way? If you have, please let us know. Secondly, as Mr. Dennis Kwok mentioned, and that is uh, cooperation on the front of environment with the Guangdong province. I understand you are nearing the end of um, your discussion work, and you say you will announce the results or findings at the end of the year. I'd like to know when, because this has an impact on our possible legislation on air quality locally. So will you be taking up the issue with Guangdong so that your cooperation with Guangdong would mean that there will be an impact on local legislation? Thank you. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chan, I'll take up the second question first. The review by Hong Kong and Guangdong is in the final stage. We have already a rough idea of the results, but we have to wait for the Guangdong province. As you know, in uh, on the mainland, there is a, a major um, issue going on, and I think only after that will they confirm any any details of any plan. So. We're just waiting for an opportunity for the two sides to say we agree on certain things so that we can announce them. Uh, you are concerned about fuel mix and nuclear energy. I understand your concern. Talking about electricity, we talk about four things, safety, reliability, reasonable prices, and also environment protection. A year or so ago, the administration did a review, but that was before the Fukushima accident, and then the situation changed. So the new term government will review the situation afresh. As I said, we place emphasis on this, and therefore at the end of this month, there will be two stakeholders' workshops. Hong Kong experts, academics, and also green groups will have the opportunity to sit down and look at the fuel mix again. This is the first step of our work. At the moment, we do not have an established stance. We can look at different situations and different fuel mixes, but we have to look at present-day Hong Kong and review people's attitude towards different matters. Uh, the secretary, undersecretary, and other officials will be sitting down with stakeholders to have an honest exchange with them on uh, different considerations about the fuel mix uh, before we map out the n direction for the next stage. Mr. Chen, can I please ask for more concrete details? Are you saying that the increase of the use of nuclear energy is acceptable to the administration? Secretary, Mr. Chen, as a responsible government, this is not just an issue for Hong Kong. 
other countries and cities face the same problem. We all have to be objective in looking at different fuel mixes and gauge uh, the impact on different people, like uh, on the price on the environment, and uh, that has to be discussed by all people in the community. Mr. Stephen Ho, thank you. Para 24, per, uh, please. The banning of commercial fishing in marine parks. My question is not exactly on this one, but I have heard that the administration is considering um, setting up more marine parks in different places. I have to speak on behalf of the agricultural sector. The Hong Kong water body is not some floating ice. It is not that you can dig a hole anywhere and then you can fish. If you map out too many marine parks, there will be a negative impact on the fishing community. Para 12, you say that you will be consulting the trade to control the use of uh, light diesel with a certain sulfur content. I'd like to ask you what you mean by local vessels. Will there be different uh, timetable for the implementation if uh, the vessel is of a certain type? And the so-called technical examination, will you be furnishing also uh, study reports on light diesel? Because the fishing folk is telling us that the diesel generators that they use now may use more fuel, actually by 10% compared to the old type um, generators. Are you aware of the operating cost and also the sales or sale receipts they get? I understand that the operating cost is such that 80% uh, of the cost is affected by fuel prices. If they have to use Light diesel with a lower sulfur content, which is of course more expensive, then I believe the diesel price would be 80% of the total operating cost instead of fuel cost. Without a consensus from the sector, please do not formulate a timetable um, unilaterally or else there will be a lot of um, negative reaction from the trade. Just now, Mr. Yik Chi Ming talked about the two car replacement schemes, which have not been effective. If you also implement this policy on local vessels without providing incentives, how do you expect the trade to take up the cost? I don't think you should just rely on a user pays principle. Would you also have other support measures? I think loans are not enough. Enough. Will there be any subsidies? Secretary, Chairman, Mr. Ho, I think the question is really on balance. Hong Kong people would like to have better air quality so they have better health, but then the sectors look at it from a different way. We are not just talking about any sector. Now, of course, uh, cars, vessels, and power generation, of course, are the three main sources of air pollution, and we have to tackle all three. As for vessels, I think uh, my colleagues can give you a more detailed answer later on. But we understand the views of the trade, uh, your views on uh, marine parks, and also how we can balance incentives with control. Last week, I talked to Mr. Yik and also Mr. Ho to see how we can understand the fishing folks' uh, needs better. Um, Mr. Ho, any follow-up? Actually, they have not stopped uh, answering the question. Right now, the local vessels are making use of light diesel with a 0.5% sulfur content. We'd like to um, lower it to 0.05%. Ms. Helena Wong, Para 13 AQOs. We welcome your proposal to submit the bill to review the AQOs. You say you would work to achieve the WHO guideline. That would be your final target. You also mentioned short term 
medium term options. As you know, lung cancer is a major killer in Hong Kong. Uh, when you draw AQOs, would you also include carcinogens, including PM2.5? We talk about uh, WHO guidelines. It is said that it should not be more than 25 micrograms in any 24 hours in any cubic meter. So is that the guideline you have in mind? When you draw up your targets for the short term, medium term or long term, are you going to make use of the most stringent guidelines of WHO or the most lenient guidelines? And will you promise that by 2015 you can achieve those targets set down by uh, the WHO? Thank you for the question. I think this is very close to your heart. We want to raise the air quality as soon as possible to reach or to approach uh, the AQO or AQG of the WHO. And we need to consider suitable measures um, for the vehicles, vessels and power plants in order to achieve that. My colleague will supplement. As for particulates, we will include that in our AQOs. My colleague will supplement. Concerning Ms. Wong's question, the new AQOs will have seven major pollutants. Three of them will have the A, um, WHO's uh, standard. As for the remaining four, we take into account Hong Kong situation and has adopted the um, intermediate goals um, set by the WHO. Although the WHO has set um, ultimate goals for certain pollutants, AQG is set by the Secretary, not a single country is able to achieve the AQGs, all the AQGs stipulated by the WHO. Um, each country uh, is allowed to set targets according to its own circumstances. As for the new AQOs, they are not our final targets. With the approval of this Council, we hope to launch those AQOs in 2014, and there will be a review every five years. We will look at the improvement achieved, and then we review the situation, and then we raise our standards um, in order to achieve the um, standards set by the WHO concerning um, micro particulates or small particulates. Will the administration adopt the um, most lenient standard, and that is 75 micrograms per cubic meter? Will that be worse than Taiwan or Singapore? You don't have. A, he doesn't have any time to answer your question, Mr. Um, that is Quark. Have a question. Concerning the recycling bins, has it been successful? This is one of the important tasks of separation of waste. As for the recycling bins, they are not effective in helping recycling and they are causing problems. People just put uh, all the litter into the um, recycling bins and you really can't do any recycling. Um, um, what percentage of waste have been recycled from the uh, tricolor bins, and how much just uh, end up in the landfill? As for green uh, industries, now there are there is a lot of uh, recycling for paper and aluminium cans because they these are valuable, but. They, the such recycling activities also um, pollute the environment in the urban area. How can 
the administration assists the development of green industries. Uh, there has been a lot of media reporting. The administration has not done enough. Um, many um, green industries are not able to continue. They are not sustainable because they don't have enough things to recycle. Um, say, for example, waste wood. Um, the daily output is about 10 tons, but they are not able to reach the recyclers. I hope the administration can learn the lessons and step up its effort in assisting the green industries. Uh, Mr. Kwok, thank you for your question concerning the tricolor bins. Um, different, uh, uh, my colleague will supplement. Now, apart from uh, hardware, we need uh, the software. Through education, people should know how to use the uh, tricolor bins. Um, as for the green industries, as for the green industries, we've, we've talked to the uh, practitioners of green industries on how we can further improve our green industries and how we can separate sourced waste and how um, recycling can be made more, effect, more effective. One idea is to provide more facilities for recycling of wood, glass, and other materials. If I may uh, interrupt, the main concern is the transportation costs. The recyclers um, uh, have a problem. Why can't you send uh, the waste directly to the recyclers instead of sending waste to the, this, the landfill? Well, uh, let me speak on the tricolor bins. As at the end of last month, uh, of last year, uh, with regard to the tricolor uh, bin recycling scheme, um, we've already covered 80% of the residential buildings, and next, um, we will in the future we will extend the coverage. Thank you, Mr. Lam. Uh, Ms. Quat. I want to follow up on waste charging asked by Mr. Chen Ha Ken. Will the administration consider separating the management of business waste from domestic waste? As for uh, waste reduction and energy saving of public housing estates, uh, what have the what has the administration do? It seems that the cutting waste at source in public housing and states is not successful. Tricolor bins have become just litter bins. Uh, what will the administration do to promote the use of technology to save energy and cut waste? As for noise barriers, uh, at roadside, will the administration consider using more innovative means to reduce noise pollution at places where the uh, building noise barriers are not uh, possible. As a waste charging, we have an open mind whether we should impose charges on commercial waste before we move on to domestic waste or we do them all together. Now we still have to um, consider the details and report to the panels. Now the um, for the commercial sector is more focused, but for the domestic sector, um, the volume is big. As for waste reduction and energy saving by the energy sector, I will talk to the relevant uh, bureaus and departments. In fact. Um, con or rather, for the housing estates, in fact, they have been uh, doing quite well in energy saving, uh, but uh, I can talk to the rent department on the um, waste issue. As a green technology, we support the research and development of green technology. 
as for road uh, traffic noise. In new developed areas, um, by means of planning, we try to minimize traffic noise at the roadside as far as possible. In old districts, or in older districts, uh, residents affected by traffic of existing uh, on existing roads, they are, this is a long-standing problem and cannot be resolved very easily. We need innovative thinking. We talked to Ms. Quatt recently on new approaches, and uh, we will actively pursue new approaches uh, to deal with traffic noise. Apart from public housing estates, I want to know what the administration has done um, in terms of saving energy and um, reducing emission in government buildings and other ma buildings managed by the government. Will the administration make use of locally uh, produced um, green materials in building? As for locally produced tiles, um, using um, recycled ways, um, they are giving priority. We'll use them as our priority, and we also conduct carbon audit on government buildings. <coughs> in terms of um, carbon audit in the coming three years, we hope to conduct uh, energy audit on 120 buildings which um, um, use more energy. I know that it's a tall order to keep um, within the limit of four minutes. I'll be brief. In para 7, you said that there are four policy subgroups under the uh, policy committee. Um, several um, policy secretaries are involved. I want to know uh, in this uh, uh, in this a sustainable environment and energy um, policy subgroup, um, what a policy who are the policy secretaries involved? Will you take into account social costs as a reference? The administration in the past refused to add um, health costs or medical costs as the cause of uh, various uh, measures. Now, if you add um, medical costs, in, you will find that it is uh, cheaper just to um, subsidize people changing uh, their cars and uh, vessels. I uh, just uh, hope that the Secretary will uh, respond to that. I know that um, you, we may not be able to convince you, but will you share the facts with, um, um, or rather, uh, who are the uh, policy secretaries involved in the Sustainable Development Task Force? You've made a good point. In terms of um, the social cost of public health, we need to um, put more emphasis on that. Um, we need to uh, balance um, our expenditure uh, with the uh, social gains. Now the Environment Bureau, the uh, Development Bureau, the Transport and Housing Bureau, and the Health and Food Bureau are involved in that um, policy group or policy subgroup. If need be, other policy bureaus can be involved. Each policy bureau has its own resources uh, for appointing consultants or universities and conduct studies. Now, concerning the Envi Environment Bureau, will you also appoint uh, consultants to conduct studies on, say, light pollution, air quality, noise pollution, and, and uh, relation with public health? Will you conduct such studies? Madam Chairman, this is our general direction and established practice, but the Environment Bureau has not done that before. Concerning light pollution, the Bureau did a study on light pollution. As for light pollution on health, uh, that might not 
have been included. That, that's what we want you to do. Now we also have a study on uh, air quality and health indicators, and we've appointed the universities to conduct a study. Uh, this is to study the relationship between air quality and health. And this will be related to um, better arranging the AQOs so that, that they fit Hong Kong's health situation. As for um, social cause of public health, um, we need to conduct uh, further studies, but um, we will we'll put more re uh, resources in such studies. Um, members have asked a number of questions on the um, issues uh, to be handled by the Bureau. And the Secretary will leave and uh, we'll move on to the next item, and that is the um, incentive scheme on the use of cleaner fuel by ocean going vessels at Perth. At the end of the meeting, I hope we can uh, reserve 10 minutes to discuss whether we'd like to have a working group and air quality like what we had last term. So let us now try to catch up um, on time spent on the last uh, agenda item. For this item, we have Ms. Christine Lowe, Under Secretary, Mr. Andrew Lai, Deputy Director of Environment Protection, Mr. Mok Wai Chin, Assistant Director, Air Policy EPD, and also Mr. Pang Hong Se Wing. PEPO Air Policy from the EPD. Under Secretary, can you please walk us through the paper? Uh, I also like to catch up on the time we spent on the other topic, so I won't introduce the paper. The paper itself is very simple. Last year, we came to let's go on the same issue. Some members already asked certain questions on vessels. If like, they'd like to uh, ask those questions again, why don't we take the time to answer them? because the birthing facility is there and we have just implemented the registration scheme. We are now getting to grips with whether the scheme is implemented smoothly and today we can give you some data how many vessels have taken part and what we plan to do next. So without further ado, I'd like uh, to allow members to ask questions. Yes, good. Four members would like to ask questions. Chen Kin Po, Sin Chong Kai, Helena Wong, and Kenneth Chan. I will also ask questions. Anyone else? Mr. Wu Chi Wai. I will not draw a line to the time slot or draw a line for the number of members who can ask questions, but only four minutes each. Chen Kin Po, para 8, as at the 15th of October, 474. Ocean going vessels or OGVs were registered. I'd like to know the percentage they take up vis a vis the total OGVs that always frequent Hong Kong so that we understand whether the voluntary scheme is successful. Secondly, you said that um, as the Guangdong Provincial Depart uh, Government it is also exploring the mandating of fuel switch for OGVs at birth in Pearl River Delta. Since I think um, a measure that is mandatory will work better because people might not listen to you if you only have a voluntary scheme. What is the progress on Hong Kong side? When do you think you can finish your discussion and also whether you would apply to the Guangdong province and also the international maritime organizations? I will answer the second question first. The first question uh, will be taken up by Mr. Andrew Lai. You asked us about our exchange with Guangdong and Beijing. The last term of government Sorry, my Cantonese is still not very good. Why don't you go into English? A general and macro. Chairman, can you Help me with those two words in Chinese. Thank you. Thank you for the translation. Um, we have secured a macro understanding with Beijing last time. And in fact, this has something to do with the national policy. If in South China and in the waters of Pearl River Delta, if we become a low emission zone, and certainly that's the direction, direction we are taking, and if that's done, there will be an impact 
on the national policy. Moreover, by a low emission zone, we mean that OGVs will not go for 0 0.5 percent or 0 0.1 in fact, they should not be using 0.5% sulfur content, but only 0.1% sulfur content. And there are other vessels, like local vessels, which ply in Hong Kong and also in PRD. We hope that there will also be a tightening up of the sulfur content in the fuel they use. My colleague can tell you about this later, and we can tell you the um, fuel quality that is uh, existing in Hong Kong and also Guangdong province will also tighten up the quality control of uh, the, the field there. Mr. Lai, um, you can give us uh, the timetable. Mr. Lai. The first question by Mr. Chan. Fuel switch um, subsidy scheme for OGVs has just been launched at the end of September and we are only three weeks into the scheme. As at the uh, 15th of October, 474 OGVs have been registered and we have already approved 97 applications. That is to uh, provide them with the incentive. Now, what is the percentage of all OGVs? Um, in 2011, there were like 30,000 vessel trips that visited Hong Kong. So if you look at the figures for the first three weeks and just oppose it, with the 30,000 figure, of course, it is a low figure. On the one hand, the scheme has just been launched and we are stepping up publicity. Secondly, this is a voluntary scheme. We provide the economic incentive by reducing uh, the port fees and also light dues by 50%. Still, the OGVs have to pay the other 50%. I'd like to uh, also let the newcomers know that when you speak, please do not mix, uh, use a mixed code. Uh, please only concentrate um, in English or Chinese because we have simultaneous interpreters and they have to switch between languages. But of course, uh, we have special terms and also given the cultural background of officials, maybe you cannot uh, just stick to Chinese, but please do bear that in mind and, and, and try your best. Mr. Sin Chong Kai. This paper is on OGVs, but I'm concerned about other things. OGVs, of course, are big vessels, and they emit a lot of um, pollution. But I'm more concerned about river trade vessels. You have approved 97 applications, but whether or not you have the scheme, OGVs are going for low emission. It is not really a result of your economic incentive. Unless you can prove to us that your economic incentive is the only reason bef below or, or behind the fuel switch. I think you touched upon what I'm concerned about a moment ago, and that is whether we can have a timetable soon enough for the scheduled liners uh, visiting uh, Hong Kong, Mac Hong Kong China Ferry Pier, and also the Macau going vessels, their emissions are terrible. They are small vessels, but they operate at uh, high frequencies. These vessels may be members of an association Mr. Yik belongs to. These vessels mainly serve Hong Kong. They take passengers to Hong Kong for sightseeing, or they also take Hong Kongers to the mainland for sightseeing. So when can you formulate a timetable to say that by a certain date, the sulfur content should not be below a certain level? And also the emission caps. Can you be more specific? Well, I think this has been asked by uh, other members, and that is you have to synchronize your effort with legislation. I will ask my colleague to let you know about the emission level of different vessels and show you why we have concentrated on OGVs. Mr. Lai, I think I can put it this way, Chairman. We like to tackle OGVs first because our survey shows that OGVs are making use of a 2.8% 
sulfur content of diesel, uh, which is 2,800 times that of uh, the fuel used by cars. That is why we'd like to encourage them to change to a 0.5% sulfur content. And secondly, local uh, fishing boats or ferries. They are already making use of 0.5% sulfur content diesel. And we are now trying out a scheme. We like to test the adaptability of the motor or engine and also whether more fuel will be used so as to encourage uh, large vessels also switch to 0.5% uh, sulfur content and we can reduce the emission by 90% if they do so. Uh, we have to consider the technical feasibility and also the fuel price. In this regard, we have talked to oil companies. You may know that a lot of our oil has come from Singapore. And Singapore intends to reduce the sulfur content of the diesel to 0.05% starting from next year. Now, if that's the case, the fuel used by local vessels will be much cleaner as a result. Can I please add? We were talking about river trade vessels. In terms of particulates, um, it is only 5%, but 20% or 25% for OGVs. That's why you can see uh, why we have concentrated on uh, OGVs. Thank you, Ms. Helena Wong, Chairman and Officials. The incentive. Do you think it is attractive enough? So OGVs will really switch to low polluting fuel. If the incentive is not really attractive, the measures will not be effective for improving air quality. Have you considered other means and ways apart from providing an incentive and apart from legislating against the use of high polluting fuel within Hong Kong waters? If the carrot doesn't work, uh, shouldn't we think about legislation that is the stick as soon as possible? Secondly, apart from controlling the quality of the fuel, are there other measures to reduce pollution? Say, for example, when OGVs enter Hong Kong waters, can they be asked to reduce speed so that the pollution emitted will be lower? So fuel and speed, shouldn't you consider both? and legislate for both and not just concentrate on the incentive. You are so right. Number one, if vessels sail more slowly, the emission will be lowered. This is free, isn't it, for all. When it uh, travels more slowly, it doesn't mean its business will be affected at all. But this is not to be championed by the Environment Protection Department, but rather by the Marine Department. Internally, we have moved at that point and we are having an exchange on it. But of course, vessel operators um, know this best. Secondly, you asked, what is the most effective measure? Now certainly, fuel switch has to be backed by legislation. And all vessels regulated by the law will have to comply. This has happened in Northern Europe and also Northern uh, North America. Um, they have done it for some time and we are taking reference from their experience. And you also asked about whether the measure is effective because we only control one type of vessels. If we look at 2011, since there was this charter that has existed, only 11% of the vessels have done fuel switch, but if you need more data, my colleagues can explain. Still, we could see that in 2011, SO2 has been reduced by 6%. And if you do our sums, I believe that has gone some way to help the health of Hong Kong people. This incentive may not attract a lot of vessels because it is voluntary. However, we have got some good results. 
In other words, the most effective way to do it is to go for legislation, and also the Marine Department is involved. Is that right? In other words, if we legislate to control the use of、uh, seriously polluting fuel and if vessels use it, then they cannot enter Hong Kong waters. And、uh, they must not be allowed to enter Hong Kong waters, or you impose heavy penalties, so that the penalty is so、um, expensive for them, they would be compelled to change for cleaner fuels. And number three, speed control. I think、um, these would be more effective than just、um, persuading them. Don't go on. Just said by just a while ago, said by the secretary. We hope that we can work with Guangdong. And China, and we, we, if the whole of the area adopts such a standard, that will be similar to that of North America or Northern Europe.、Um, Mr. Chen, last year there were about four hundred thousand, four hundred and ten thousand vessel trips using our harbour. And、uh, for ocean-going vessels, it's about thirty thousand.、Uh, river trade vessels are causing a lot of pollution. In the paper, it is said that in the long term, we will talk to the PRD on how we are going to do it. But can you show us the timetable and also the targets, so as to give us any confidence? Another question is a follow-up on Miss Wong's question. Now, just by purely persuading people or providing incentives、uh, will not be very effective. Just like you ask people to replace their cars, the participation rate is only 13 percent so far. And for some makes of vehicles,、um, maybe 30 percent, but on the whole, just 13 percent. Will the administration consider introducing、uh, more stringent regulatory measures or even legislation? If such an incentive scheme、uh, is to achieve a certain incentive, then we'll use which to regulation. If、uh, the, it is not achieved, as for river trade vessels,、uh, my colleague will answer the question. If you ask us about determination, I think the ter this term of the government has the determination in terms of air quality. We have three major targets: first, roadside air quality; second, vessel emission; third, regional cooperation. Regional cooperation and vessel emission are related, or are closely related. I hope that in the near future I can go to Guangdong. Now, after the 18th plenary uh, meeting, um, the Guangdong province will implement、um, environmental certain environmental measures. If we can talk to them that this is very important and that is something we want to achieve in the coming few years,、um, if we can show our determination and we have the tact and the effort, then we can work with Guangdong on limiting vessel emission. We have a clear long-term target. We hope that we can become a low emission zone. I mean. The waters of Hong Kong and the PRD. All the vessels、uh, will be regulated appropriately. If that is done, that will be the first one in China, if not in Asia. So please do not undermine our determination. But please also don't under、uh, underestimate. Uh, the uh, difficulty. We need to spend a lot of effort on Guangdong and in Beijing.、Uh, Mr. Chen. Yes,、uh, Chairman. According to our understanding, many river trade vessels fill up their tanks in Hong Kong because of better quality and lower price. If we are to 
increase the or improve the quality of uh, fuel for vessels in Hong Kong, we can raise our standard. Mr. Wu Chi Wai. In paragraph two, it is said that seventeen um, ocean-going liner companies by 2013, according to their undertaking, uh, will resolve, will switch to low sulfur fuel. But only about 500 vessels have been registered. Uh, concerning the 17 liner companies, how many of their vessels are coming to Hong Kong? And um, are they very um, active in participating in the uh, charter? Now, according to your scheme, uh, what is the total number of vessels that are eligible? And what would be the percentage of impact on air quality? The third question is the third question says concerning the smaller vessels, they are consuming um, five percent sulfur diesel, and you want to upgrade it to zero point zero five percent, and you are testing the engines. Concerning the uh, river trade vessels, are they all using zero point five percent sulfur fuel? Uh, Mr. Mock will answer the third question. Concerning the river trade vessels, their engines also consume uh, diesel. If they uh, consume light diesel, the sulfur content is 0.5%. If I may answer the question, uh, other questions. As for the 17 ship liners, uh, how many of them, uh, how many ships? Uh, participate in the scheme. Now, some ships may be in Hong Kong, some ships may not be in Hong Kong in a certain period of time. In September, we introduced the incentive scheme. Within a short period of time, on the 26th of September to 15th of October, within a period of just slightly more than two weeks, 150 OGV have applied for the scheme. And there were 1,109 vessel trips coming to Hong Kong, or 14 percent. Now, uh, um, concerning the Fair Winds Charter, the subscription rate is 12 percent, so that is already an improvement. But we cannot be uh, complacent. We will, as for air quality, uh, what would the percentage of improvement? At present, the number is rather small. As said by the Undersecretary earlier, we have seen a reduction of 6%, and I explain the 6% to you. Now, when we drew, drew up the Fair Winds Charter, now, in, um, in Kwai Chung, there is a air, uh, air monitoring station. When the wind is blowing towards that monitoring station and we measure the change in sulfur content, we see the uh, change. Now with uh, the uh, Fair Winds Charter, according to our Kwai Chung monitoring station, sulfur content declined by, uh, or SO2 content declined by 6%. We will um, encourage the trade to participate in the scheme. Three members are in the line, uh, in the queue. I'll draw a line there. Chong Shu Kan, Yik Shi Ming, and then myself. I'll draw a line there. I uh, ask Mr. Mok to clarify one point. Concerning the Fair Winds Charter, if they switch to low um, diesel, uh, low sulfur diesel, will you give them a better berth? Well, it's difficult to make such an arrangement because it's not under our control. I want to ask this. Concerning the major ports in the world, do they have legislation for the use of low sulfur fuel? If the answer is yes, how many of them? Uh, who are they? 
Now, since、um, the administration is so determined, do you have a timetable for the legislation? And when will we be able, be able to set up the low emission zone concerning river trade vessels, small vessels, if their engines cannot deal with 0.05 percent、uh, sulfur fuel? Will you give subsidy to these vessels so that they can achieve that? I'll answer the first and second question, and then my colleague will answer the third question. In the world, two there are two uh, low uh, emission zones. The first one is in Scandinavia. All the major Scandinavian ports are regulated. The other is in North America. United States, the ports of United States and Canada, all their ports are covered in a low emission zone. In certain areas, such as California. Their rules are even stricter. So, if a vessel、um, departs from Hong Kong or departs from Shanghai or Dalian, when they、um, when when it goes to a port in California, it has to do a lot of things before it goes to California. Goes into the Californian waters. It has to go slowly, slower. It has to replace its fuel. In North America, in and in Scandinavia, they have a number of measures. Because of the legislation, they don't need to provide any incentive. This is the standard. Because of the new standard, the new requirement. There is no issue of competition. If you go to another port, that's the same rule. But in Asia, or in other parts of the world, there is no low emission zone. Hong Kong is at the front because we are discussing that. Singapore is giving subsidy. The subsidy began even earlier than us, but that is only voluntary. So they. Are not、um, very effective, you may, if you may say so. As in, as for Hong Kong, we are in southern China. What is our timetable? I have yet to talk to the、uh, counterparts my, in Guangdong Province, so I dare not tell you、uh, the timetable. But、uh, if you ask what is in our mind, we want to do it. Um, within this term of the government, we want to make a big step within this term of government. Is it? I do have a follow-up. I still have a third question. The 0.05 percent, Mr. Mock. Now we are conducting a technical assessment uh, in, uh, with the trade. Now 0.5 percent sulfur. In comparison with 0.05 percent sulfur, the two are similar, and we've talk, we've asked a、um, um, few experts to talk to the trade.、Um, the, in fact, the、uh, few are quite similar, and there is no、um, problem, no technical problem. No,、um, there is something. There is a problem with the、uh, clock, Mr. Yip. I have to declare interest because I am a director of the Modern Terminal、uh, Limited. We really、uh, hope to have cleaner fuel,、uh, but we need to be concerned. The secretary mentioned、uh, North America and Scandinavia, but in the The Pearl River Delta is the biggest exporting region. If the importing region are tightening the rules, then the ships will have to switch over, and Hong Kong should move to a set direction. But we have to work in tandem with the PRD ports; otherwise, our logistics industry will suffer a serious blow. 
I Madam mean, Chairman, I agree with you on this point. When the administration does the calculation, the administration should consider social costs. When you consider supporting the trade to make investment to improve air quality, you need to take into account the cost borne by the trade. And with the improvement of health, uh, the uh, social cost will be reduced, and that should be ac accounted. I, um, I basically agree. You mentioned how to calculate uh, medical costs or social costs or social and health costs. The uh, previous terms of the government might have not done enough, and we are um, considering whether we can get more resources and expertise uh, to work on this area. In the future, when we discuss uh, specific issues like uh, these, uh, we can provide you with the information. Mr. Hick, any follow-up? Uh, no. Sometimes the Under Secretary uses oh, rather weird Cantonese. Uh, sorry, let me also supplement. The more I come, I w will speak uh, Cantonese better. But it's not just my Cantonese. I, I need to speak faster. I have to practice. Well, yes, but uh, I must apologize. Time is limited, and I like to protect members' rights to speak up and also to speak in an orderly fashion. So I must apologize again. Four minutes is really too short, I understand. But uh, now I will also use my own four minutes. Under Secretary, if we legislate, in Hong Kong, but other parts don't legislate, then we are going to drive business away. If the competitors are very close to us, then the business goes to them, but then the pollutants are blown back to us and is not going to benefit in any benefit us in any way. So, Under Secretary, how can we uh, synchronize our work with our competitors in PLD? And also, we also have competitors along the Yangtze River, but of course, they go to the west coast of uh, the U.S. more and they, um, of course, also tackle vessels in northern China. But of course, rail freight is very um, efficient now, and we can use the, the rail to move goods to northern China. So, Under Secretary, do you have a timetable to synchronize and standardize legislation uh, of all ports in PLD? And Paris 8? You say 129 applications have been received, but you have only approved 97. 32 have not been approved. Why? Is it because there have been problems talking to this sector, or is it that there is a the scheme has loopholes? And also, how can you expedite the? approval of applications. Well, it is not that we have not approved the applications. Rather, they are just pending because you need to go through a certain procedure to give the approval. It is not that the other applications will not be approved. From what I understand, only one has been rejected. And it is because the captain wrote certain unnecessary remarks on the application, so it is an invalid road, let's say. Uh, it seems the captain did not agree with certain provisions in the application form, so we need to talk to the liner. Oh, so you do not allow anybody to express any views. I hope you will not be so bureaucratic. We do not know the details, but um, maybe that's why I'm not speaking in a neutral manner. But if indeed the vessel itself uses uh, like diesel or diesel with a low sulfur content, I hope you'll be more flexible with this application. Uh, what about the Yangtze River? First, we need some time to understand the bigger picture. As I was explaining, the entire country and even in all Asia, we do not have any low emission zones. But the country knows about this. Because all Chinese vessels, when they go to Europe and the U.S., which are, of course, the most uh, common destinations, and they know what to do when they go to those places. In Hong Kong, 
We have done the first round. Amongst the entire country, we have got our own emission checklist for vessels. And secondly, we have an NGO which has done some surveys. And in the entire PRD, we can see some positive impact already. And I believe this is not being done by any other parts of the country yet. Therefore, in terms of research, Hong Kong is playing a pioneer role. And in fact, these studies don't only have to do with Hong Kong, but with uh, the entire southern China. And uh, the country is, in fact, very interested in such studies. OK, I have also to be strict with myself. Uh, if you have not exhausted your reply, please supplement with a paper. OK, that's all for this uh, agenda item. Update on incentive scheme on the use of cleaner fuel by OGVs at birth. Now we go into AOB. If the Undersecretary has the time, please remain behind and listen in to our discussion, because in the end, the administration will have to reply anyway. AOB, setting up a subcommittee on improving air quality. In the last term, uh, there were so many agenda items for this panel and whether the SARG should follow the WHO guidelines. Um, in the last three years of the last term, there was a dedicated subcommittee under this panel to just concentrate on improving air quality and it uh, achieved certain results. In fact, the last item, um, more clean fuel to be used by OGVs. It was exactly one item proposed by the last subcommittee. So would you like us to follow the tradition and set up a subcommittee? And I'd also like to ask you to also consider light pollution, noise, etc. All that has an impact on public health. In the last term, we time and again urged the administration to link air quality to public health. The last term of government did not listen to us, but I hope this term the legislature can cooperate better with the executive. And so would you like to look at all matters from the perspective of public health, including air quality, noise and light pollution? and other environment issues so that we can expand the terms of reference of the original subcommittee. What are your views? So first of all, do you like to have a subcommittee? And secondly, would you also like to include light and noise pollution uh, in addition to air quality and also to look at things from the perspective of public health? Members, Mr. Charles Mock. Chairman, I second the setting up of the subcommittee and also to look at all issues from the perspective of public health. Members, uh, Deputy Chairman, I do agree with this approach, but would that be a problem if we lump too many things together? Light, noise and air, maybe we have to talk to different departments about these matters. Shouldn't we set up independent subcommittees on different matters? Let me provide the information. Indeed, you take things up um, with dif different bureaus and departments. As the Secretary said in his speech, uh, under the policy committee, there are policy groups um, involving different uh, bureaus, including the THB. Well, light pollution would probably involve the Development Bureau because we are talking about uh, flashing neon signs and signboards outside buildings. And then uh, noise pollution has more to do with uh, road facilities and noise barriers. So in fact, our subcommittee may correspond with the fourth policy group under the policy committee because uh, that one is an interdepartmental or intertopical um, uh, policy committee. I agree, Chairman. I believe by so doing, the subcommittee can focus on issues which may not 
enjoy the attention of the entire community, but which have a lot of um, impact on public health. I think it is well worth our while to set up a subcommittee to look into that. Mr. Tony Chair, if I remember your names correctly, I must apologize. Did I say your name correctly? Well, yes. Thank you. I'd like just to clarify. First of all, I support the Subcommittee on Air Quality. And Chairman, you talk about social cost. That is important, and I support that. But I'd like to clarify something. Is it that we are going to set up other subcommittees on noise and light pollution? This is what the Deputy Chairman said a moment ago. Now, there are two choices before you. One, to set up subcommittees also on noise and light pollution, or to put all three kinds of pollution under the same subcommittee. Let me provide some information. Under the House Committee, we can only set up 16 subcommittees. Now, we like to uh, be the first to set up three subcommittees, but other panels will certainly cry foul because we are already setting up three under one panel. Well, no, just eight. A total of eight under the House, not 16. So let us be considerate towards other panels. Let us not use up three uh, out of a quota of eight. Well, Deputy Chairman, I don't object to having one subcommittee. It is all right for us to merge all three into one, but we might need to change the name. We only have three more minutes. I have not heard, heard any objection to the proposal. It's just that the terms of reference have to be redrafted. I'll ask the clerk to draw up the terms of reference for this subcommittee for our consideration at the next meeting. And, of course, uh, that can be the subject of amendment by members. The clerk will just prepare a draft for our discussion. When we have a consensus, we can take it to the House and uh, to ask for their endorsement. Helena Wong, I'd like to ask uh, about the Subcommittee on Light Pollution. I hope you will also tackle the reflection from um, glass curtain walls of buildings which have a bad impact on nearby buildings. Okay, that's all for the meeting today and the clerk will prepare that draft paper. Thank you all. Thank you very much.